to you. I should warn you. No, don't warn me, warn me. Just slip. I get help a warning. me now. Help me feel. What was that? Don't move. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm uh, Kirk Cranston. Yeah? Yeah, I thought I should warn you. This is Kirk Cranston. Cranston, this is Cruz Castillo. Yeah, I guessed as much. Oh, you must be the uh, the gentleman who... Oh, uh, yeah, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, listen, uh, it was nice to meet you, and uh -huh. thanks for looking at her suitcase all the way in here, man. Uh, aloha. Well, thank you. I didn't mean uh, aloha. Hello. And aloha goodbye. Yeah. Catch you later. That was terrible, Yeah, you know. I know it was. You know, I'm probably going to feel guilty about it for minutes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Poor Kirk, you were very rude to him. Oh, was I? Wait! A bit anxious. <laughs> In Hawaii, he was very much of a help. Oh, I'll bet he was. Uh -huh. Don't you want to hear all about the merger plans and all the people I met? No, you just try to talk about kids. Try to talk about that. And just try to talk about the pictures of their kids. <laughs> So where'd you get that cute little mouth anyway? I don't know. You don't seem like you were gone a month. Yeah. I didn't like it. Well, maybe I should go away more often to make you appreciate me more. Is the lady unsatisfied? No. What's wrong, baby? You know, I was going to go see Daddy before I came here. Well, I'm glad you came here. You saw him yesterday. How was he doing? He seemed the same. Not any better? Uh, just the same. His color was all right, and he was breathing peacefully. I really couldn't see any change at all, but, uh, but I'm not a doctor. What did the nurse say? She said he was all right. I gave him your message. If he understood it, I'm sure it made him happy. I want to go home. I want to go see him. Okay. Okay. You can get dressed and I'll take you over there. Thank you. Thanks for everything. You know, I've been scaring myself a lot lately. Getting so involved in my work that it's, I'm almost obsessive about it. That's how tycoons get to be tycoons, baby. Yeah. There's definitely something seductive about it. it sort of pulls you in. It's been especially intense for me since Daddy had a stroke. Are you worried about it? Yes. I don't want to feel like I don't have a private life. You know what I think? What? Well, this may not make any sense to you, but I think that you think that the harder you work, the better chance your father has of living, as if his life were somehow connected to the business, and the better one of them does, the better the other's going to do. Well, I do want to make it really wonderful for him when he comes back. I bet. See, one time a long time ago when my mama was real sick, we thought we might lose her, you know? And I started studying like crazy. I'm going to hit the books like a demon. I wanted to prove to her that I could get those straight A's that she always said I could get, you know? And if she did die, I wanted to make sure she didn't die uh, disappointed in me. That sounds like you. Oh, I passed. I'll tell you, when she recovered, I started dogging it again. Oh, I don't believe that. Your mother always told me what good grades you get. Ooh, how tacky. Would she take out my report cards and start parading them around? Anyway, that, that's, that's my theory. Look, you know this obsession? Will you protect me from it? You mean protect you from yourself? I just... I just want you to be there for me. And when I start to do something stupid, will you straighten me out? Anytime, day or night. We call this the famous We Never Close floating clinic of Cruz Castillo. <laughs> Constant counseling on the water. Deep sea college. <laughs> where those who flounder come uh, to wave their worries goodbye. It is an absolute good thing that you don't earn your living making puns. 
Come on, I thought those were pretty good, you know? Ah! Uh, Don't I get some points for quick? No! Those you were quick! Quick? Points? Quick? And what, pray tell, is this? That is the lay that Kirk bought me at the airport. Oh. I gotta tell you something, you know, I... I hated it. A lot. When I called you in Hawaii and a strange man's voice answered the phone and told me you were in the shower, I got on my back, you know. I was very close to taking a plane over there and making an issue of it. I know. I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad you trusted me enough to not come. Kirk was there. He was helpful. He did his job. I mean, I, I'm not even sure I'm going to hire him yet. I know. I was being stupid. Here. Aloha. Which aloha is this? Is this goodbye or hello? This is the aloha that says I love you. A lot. Hi. Hi, Aiden. How is he? Well, I think at this point you should probably speak with the doctors. What are they going to tell me? They'll tell you that his life signs are simply declining. Just take it easy, darling. Take it easy. Just the machines that are keeping him alive. Could you excuse us for a moment? I'll let you know when we're done. can't stand to see him so dependent on those things. Living every day, sleeping year after year. I know. I feel like he's slipping away from me. Everything I'm doing is so futile. I mean, the merger plans and all of that, it's... He's trying to fight for his life, and, and, and he has no worry about business or... As long as he's alive, there is hope for him, darling. It's not what the doctors say. It's not what the nurse just said right now. This was what he was most afraid of. To be kept alive involuntarily without really being alive at all. Some horrible imitation of life. Listen, you want to get out of here for a little while? You want to take a walk or no, something? No, I don't want to take a walk. He made me promise him not to let him live in any pain, and that's exactly what's happening. Darling, you have no way of knowing he's in pain. If he has any consciousness at all, he had he would have to be. If if not then he's simply being kept alive by machines. He didn't want to be a burden to any of us. I couldn't do it. No, Eden, you couldn't. I tried so hard to... to do all of his wishes, to do all of his scheduling, the merger and... Keeping Mason out of the business, fighting every single one of his battles for him. And now this, I... I couldn't, I... I can't kill him. He doesn't want to be on these machines. If I take him off these machines... He made me promise. Listen to me. What you're considering is illegal, and a lot of people would can call it immoral as well. I don't want you to think about it anymore, you hear me? I think about it all the time. There is always hope for a miracle. It doesn't even have to be a miracle. It could just be something that would happen in the, in the normal course of, of his days. He might just come out of it on his own. That's something we have to pray for. And pray hard.
You're required at the house tonight. Why? I just thought it was better at the time if I didn't get involved in it. But you are going to be involved in it. When we get married, you're going to become a part of my family and a part of all of our problems. I just didn't want to fight about that particular issue, that's all. Fight about what? Daddy's condition? That's right. What would we fight about? Eden, I don't believe in uh, euthanasia, mercy killing, call it what you will. I think... I don't think a person has the right to decide whether or not somebody else dies. Look, I don't want to start a moral argument. This is not something I advocate for people. This is my father. I know, but it is a moral issue, isn't it? And personalizing it doesn't, doesn't change that. Now, if, if somebody, if a human being has the means to keep another human being alive, he must employ those means. Under any circumstances, life is life, and nobody living is above it. So what you're saying is you don't think a man has a right to choose his own destiny? His own destiny, certainly, but not the destiny of somebody else. But Daddy said that if it got to this point that he wanted to die. I know he said that, but he was depressed. I mean, you, don't you wonder if he would still mean that? Maybe he's been hearing all the stuff that's been going down around him. What if now he wants desperately to stay alive, but he can't tell us? I mean, God knows the man has a lot to live for. I mean, he could sweep away so much trouble just by waking up. I'm so confused. I know, and I don't think you should be trying to make a decision like this when you are confused. My point is there's no way you can know what's in your father's mind right now. And without knowing, you don't dare take his life in your hands. I'm so tired. I know. All I want to do is what Daddy wanted. It's all I've ever wanted. I know, baby, I know. I realize how incredibly hard this must be for you. I wish there were some way I could make it easier. 